Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. This is part eight. It's a lot of parts of my students and parents series. Today we're going to put people on a mailing list so that not everybody's got to get a copy of little Timmy's report card. You want them on the list, right? You want to be able to have them in the parents list for emergency contacts like we did last week or yesterday or whenever we did that one. But not everybody has to be on the mailing list to get stuff. So that's what we're gonna do today. Of course, if you haven't watched parts one through seven yet, what are you doing here? Go, get out of here. Go watch one through seven. Come on back when you're ready. All right, so we got a call sheet and the call sheet's got everybody on it in case you got a call, you know. Uh, Willie McCoy's gotta come home and I'll be able to have all this contacts there, but not all of these people need to get a copy of the report card. So that's what we'll do by putting people on a mailing list, okay? Now take a moment and think about it. We got a student table, we got a parent table, we got a junction table. Where do you think the is on mailing list field needs to go? In the parent T? Hmm? Maybe, maybe not. What do you think? Here's my list of parents, All right? If I open up, let's go to the students. If I open up, um, oh, this is just, this was messing around the extended cut. Get rid of that. Um, if I was messing around with William McCoy, well, that's a bad example. Let's go to Bobby Kirk. All right, he's got three parents listed on his call sheet. Where am I going to track who's getting his report card? Is it Jim? Is it Jim and Carol? Is it just Mr. Spock, the logical one? Because, you know, he'd be the best person to go over that report card with. <laughs> well, you can't save it in the parent table because Mr. Spock is responsible for three students and he is, you know, listed as a responsible party for Bobby Kirk, but he might not be needing to get his report card. So we're going to store this value in the junction table, right? It's that relationship between the parent and student that determines if you're on the mailing list for that student, right? A parent might be on the mailing list for one student and not for another. All right, so let's go to the junction table design view. And here we're going to add on mailing list. And that can be a simple yes, no value. If you want to leave it defaulted to no, that's fine. If you want to default it to yes, that's completely up to you. If you want to just assume that all parents are added to the mailing list, unless you take them off the mailing list, totally your call. They're your Legos, build them however you want to build them. All right, save it, close it. Let's go to our, uh, the parent subform. So we need to go to parent sub F, this guy, and we're going to put that checkbox right on here. We should be able to add existing fields. There you are. Click, drop, bang. And at this point, we might want to put some headings above this. So I'm just going to chop this off, stick it up here. Let's make it white so we can actually read it. And this will be parent. And this will be mail. You know what it means, right? Mail. On the mailing list, send them mail. Send them the bad news. Don't send it to the parent that's going to ground you. Okay. Okay. Save it. Close it. Now, if I go to my students and I open up Bobby Kirk. And I got to make this bigger here now too, don't I? All right, close that, open this up. It's on my wish list for Microsoft to make subforms automatically resize. I know that's never gonna happen. You can do it with code, but eh, maybe drop anchor points in here. Okay, anyways, let's try that again. There we go. Now, Jim Kirk gets your mail. Carol doesn't need one. Okay, let's go to somebody else. Sally Kirk, maybe Sally, uh, let's put Carol Marcus on here. Maybe Carol gets the mail for Sally, All right? And then you go to Sue, okay? Willie McCoy, let's see who else we got. Joe McCoy, maybe both parents, they live apart. They wanna get several. Of course, now this means you're gonna have to put addresses in for each of your parents, right? Open up the parent record, put an address field down here, but at least now you know who is getting the mail. Now, as far as making those mailing labels goes, that is going to involve a query as well. Now we already have a query here that's got the phone stuff in it. 
really all we have to do is add the on mailing list and then uh, add a criteria. And there we go. So let's copy this. Copy, paste, student. Whoops. Try it again. Copy, paste. See, another one of my pet peeves that with access sometimes, you got to go copy, paste real fast. Because if you hit copy and wait a second, somehow it loses focus on that navigation pane. It's a pain in the butt. This is going to be student parent mail queue. All right, design view. In here we need on mailing list. This has got to be true. And now when I run it, you should only see people that are on the mailing list. Now, I'm not going to waste time making an actual mailing list or a mailer. You know, you can add address fields to the tables. That's easy to do. You can make mailing labels. I cover that in my Access Beginner 1 class. Very simple stuff. One thing that might be handy to know, though, this is a little more of an advanced lesson, is which ones of my students do I not have a parent on the mailing list for? That might be very handy to know, right? Because I've only put people on mailing list for a couple of students. I got a lot of students in my database. A lot of them don't have parents that are on the mailing list. That might be important, all right? We can do that with a simple aggregate query. All right, if you want to learn more about aggregate queries, here you go. It's basically a summary query, like you add up a bunch of people's orders, that kind of thing. Well, we can count up the number of records that are available that are on the mailing list for a particular student. All right, how do we do that? See, a lot of this stuff is, is taking concepts you might already know and putting them together in different ways. That's why sometimes I cover the same topics more than once, because there's a lot of different ways to do some of this stuff. Right? You can You can... Use an aggregate query for something you might not have thought about using it for before. All right, create query design. All right, let's bring in the student table and the junction table. That's all the data that I need. I don't care about the actual parent records themselves. All right, the data that I need is right there. All right, bring in student ID, first name and last name. We're going to make an aggregate query, so don't bring in the star. And then bring in on mailing list. Okay. All right, next we're going to make this relationship an outer join so I see all of the students, whether or not they've got a parent listed in the junction table. Okay, and if I run this now, there's everybody. Okay, now you might see Bobby Kirk in here three times. It's because he's got three records over here. Okay, one of them is on the mailing list, two of them are not. And that's important. We're going to get to that in a second. Next, we're going to turn on totals to aggregate this stuff. Okay, now these will all be grouped by because we want to group by the student. That's normal. We want to see one record for Bobby Kirk, for example. Now, you might think over here that you want to count these records. You want to count how many records are on mailing list, right? But if you run that, it's just going to give you a count of the total number of records. What you really want to do is you want to sum these records up. Sum them up because... This is what you'll get now. Okay. Anybody who's got a negative one means they've got one record that is on the mailing list. Negative two means Joe McCoy's got two records on the mailing list. All right. What we care about are the zeros or the nulls. Zeros means that Peter Scott and Adam here, for example, they all have parents, but none of them are marked on the mailing list. And Billy Williams doesn't have a parent record at all. That's why his is null. Okay, and now you can use this query to determine which students you still have to go through and mark so you've got a parent on the mailing list. All right, and you, yeah, you can reformat this and you can multiply it by negative one. You can do all kinds of stuff. I'll rename this as uh, parents on ML. So it shows up like parents on ML. Save the query, right? Parents on mailing list queue. You could run this whenever you want. You can sort this by that if you want to, right? Give it a good sort so everybody shows up top. Well, you got your null up top and all your zeros. I would now feed this through a different query, and then you can say, show me all the records where this is null or zero. But there you go. That's going to do it for now. And I think this is going to do it for this series for now. 
Of course, uh, only two of these, only parts one and two have gone public so far. The rest of the comments I've been getting from members who have been watching these. As remember, members get to watch these as soon as they're made. You don't got to wait for them to get released to the public. It's one of the benefits of being a member. If you've got more ideas for things you want to see me do with this database, post them in the comments down below. And if I like them, I'll make more parts to the series. I like getting comments from you guys. I do read them all. I might not reply to everybody, but I do read them all. If you want to learn more about all this relationship stuff, the many-to-many, -many, the subforms, all the different kinds of relationships that are available, one of my more popular uh, seminars on my website is the Relationship Seminar. Here's a link to it there. I'll put it down below. Yeah, sorry, it's not a very, it's an older seminar. It's one of the first ones I did, but it's really, really good. That's why I don't have a really cool slide for it. I got to make a better slide for it. But uh, check it out. You can scan the little QR code there. This covers all the different kinds of relationships you could possibly have in your database, including self-join relationships. Self-join relationships are really neat. In fact, I got a whole separate video on them. You can check them out. You use them usually for genealogy databases where people relate to other people. You can do that with students and parents. Okay. In fact, I thought about maybe making a part nine where I show how to take students and parents and putting them together in the same table. Because you, you can, you can do that. And then you can have people who are like, you know, parents of other parents. Um, because they're all people. They all share the same things, right? They all have a first name, a last name, an address, a phone number. They can be on a mailing list, right? And this way you can have people that are related to other people. It's a little more complex, but uh, it's certainly possible and doable. And you just distinguish them with a field. Is this a parent? Is it a student? Give them a person type. Right? You could add teachers to the same table, too, and administrators and all that stuff. In fact, that's one of the core concepts that I cover in my ABCD, my Access Business and Contact Database. Everybody in here is a person. You can put them in different groups. You can give them different classifications and all that different kind of stuff. Check it out. But there you go. That's going to do it for this series for now. If I decide to make a part nine, check the comments down below because I can't update the video after it's published. That's one of the YouTube things. Um, but I can update the description down below. So if I do decide to release a part nine in the future, check down below the description underneath the video and you'll see a link to part nine if it's down there. Thanks for putting up with my cold. I know I've had a cold over the past uh, couple videos here with the series, but uh, yeah, I'm starting to feel a little better. So I'm getting there. I know I've, I've recorded most of these videos over the course of two or three days, but you guys will be suffering with my, my nasty voice for about a, a week and a half. So... <laughs> All right, so that's going to do it for today. That's your tech help video. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsor, Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. They're manufacturing experts specializing in Microsoft Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. Check them out at accessexperts.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. 
But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.